Hi guys and welcome back to the YouTube videos. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. This is the first video I've done in a while um, where I'm actually filming it myself because um, Joe's not here. Uh, so yeah, I hope everyone's good. Um, today I'll run you through a full day of eating as well as a leg session at Warehouse Gym. Um, so you'll have already seen meal one. I'm just cracking on with some more work now. Um, then I'll show you meal two. Uh, and I will likely catch up with you between meal two and meal three. So yeah, just sit back, relax, enjoy the video, um, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like button, and I will catch up with you uh, between the next two meals. glad that you had the sort of mindset that you were a bit sort of pissed off at yourself about not taking every set to, to maybe the full intensity that you could have done um, which is spot on mate you know that's the kind of attitude that you want I'd much rather you be like that than thinking that you're training hard when you know there's more in the tank <laughs> So just in the process of booking the tickets to uh, to watch my, my training partner and client, Big Reese Fit. So meal three is here. It doesn't actually look the most appealing, um, but it is actually one of our favorite meals. I'm not gonna run through exactly um, what is in every single meal. I will uh, have the meals set out on the screens. Um, when I make this meal, I also, while I'm like making it all, I also make my intra workout and my pre workout. So currently, the uh, the pre workout is expansion and ignition. So it's those two paired together. So the stimulant pre workout and the, the non stim, the pump pre workout. I really like those together. They work really well. They're not insanely strong, sort of. I don't get a massive um, boost from it, but then I also don't get a come down from it. I feel like I get sort of like a sustained level of energy and, and focus throughout the session. Um, I do like Stim Junkie as well. I do really like Stim Junkie. Um, sometimes I just feel like it's a little strong. Um, I keep it to like a lower dose um, and I just feel like at the minute I probably don't need that. Um, I had a time not too long ago um, coming out of a D volume week where I just, I've stayed on low caffeine. You'll have seen this morning, I have decaf coffee in the morning now. So my only caffeine intake is pre-workout. On rest days I have zero caffeine. I used to have like a rain and I might even have, I'd have a coffee in the morning. My caffeine at the minute is really low uh, and I feel like that's benefiting my appetite and benefiting my recovery a lot as well. And then intra workout, we've got the loaded EAA. At the minute, cherry cola bottle flavor is my go-to. Uh, they're all really good to be fair. Every single flavor that CMP do is actually really, really nice. Um, but again, I'll put uh, everything that's included in the intro on screen. But that's what I do while I'm making this meal. I prepare the intro workout and the pre-workout as well. And in the morning, when I'm making my second meal, so the bagels and the eggs, I prepare my pre-workout cream of rice. Um, at the minute, Shannon's actually making that second meal. So I keep forgetting to make this. So I've just made it now with this. So I'll stick it in the fridge, uh, maybe in the freezer for the last half an hour, just so it's ready for pre-workout. But yeah, that is a, how this meal looks. I'll put all the timestamps of each meal on as well. Um, in regards to sort of like my day, how it looks, this is kind of a, a very normal training day. So I'll get up, uh, weigh in for 6 a.m., come upstairs, get my coffee, um, meal one, which is the cream of rice, get my water in, uh, get straight on with check-ins from pretty much half six. For that first half an hour, I'll be messaging like on my phone, messaging family, if, if, if there's family messages, I'll be watching football highlights, catching up with things like that. Uh, like any personal messages before I get on with work. 
I'll do check-ins from half six till pretty much nine, then I'll have that second meal, then I'll do check-ins again. Um, I generally get the most of my check-ins done in that first stint, and then whatever I have left will get done. Um, generally on a training day, it's anywhere between six and eight, nine check-ins on a rest day, it's anywhere between eight and, and 12 check-ins. Um, and then after that, it's getting back to form feedback. So that's what I've been doing generally after that second meal. Um, I'll get any more check-ins done and then it's a case of doing form feedback for pretty much the rest of the morning before I go and train as well as getting the meals in. Um, and then it's also any content creation. So social media content, client posts, um, videoing, things like this. So that's kind of how a normal training day looks. A rest day, I just get a little bit more time for client work and a little bit more time for um, content creation. So yeah, that's how everything looks really. Uh, I'm gonna get this in and then I actually need to nip to Tesco. So I will take you along and uh, show you what I'm gonna get. So just some of the bits that I get every two or three days, you'll have seen as I was scanning through, but I'm just gonna run through the bits that I get like quite often. So Frosties, um, I've upgraded to Frosties. I was on Frosted Flakes and I thought I'm gonna to have to try Frosties. I mean, they're, they're like three times the price, but I think they're worth it because they just taste like three times as, as sugary. So um, yeah, Frosties instead of Frosted Flakes. Uh, I get bagels every few days, crumpets, go through those like I don't know what. Um, the innocent fruit juice that I have every morning, which is really, really good. Recommend that, it's very nice. Um, that's the salad that I have with the meal that you've just seen. Um, steak, likewise, that I have with that meal, 5% steak mint, and then eggs as well that you've seen, obviously, that we have every morning. So they're the few bits that I'll get every few days. Um, Price-wise, generally comes around to like 10 to 30 quid, anywhere between that range, within every one to four days. Shannon often gets a few bits, but it's not too expensive to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything that I got. So now I've got a bit more work to do and then I'll catch up with you for the pre-workout meal. Right then, time for another meal. So this is the pre-workout meal, which is now uh, actually meal four. Um, and again, the timestamps and the macros and everything will be on screen. Um, if you don't know this jam, it's, it's Bon Ma Man, you know, Bon, bon Ma Man. Um, very good jam, Bon Ma Man. Very, very good jam. If you haven't tried that jam, try that jam. It's from Tesco and it's, it's very nice jam. So this is the pre-workout meal. Um, generally choosing foods that digest really well, that are relatively low volume um, so that it doesn't sit too much. This is usually about 45 minutes to an hour before I'll start training. I'll eat this, then I pretty much go and drive to train, which is about 25, half an hour. So generally by the time I've eaten this and got going, it's about, like I say, 45 to an hour. Um, so yeah, I'll get this down and then I will be leaving to go and train legs. Right then guys, so welcome to the voiceover part and I'm gonna run you through the full leg session. So. Currently uh, training four times per week, so on a lower rest, upper, um, which is a push dominant session, um, lower rest, upper, which is a pull dominant session, rest. So it works to, to be a Tuesday, Friday, Sunday as rest day. So this was the Wednesday, um, the Thursday, sorry, leg session, uh, which is in warehouse. So we start off with the adductor. First set, I'm doing a, a two count in both ends of the rep just to try and make the, the most of, of both ends of that range, make the contraction as hard as possible while the adductors are fresh at the start of the session. Uh, second set, not too much focus on the tempo, um, only a small drop in, in terms of load. Um, then we move on to the live fitness prone hamstring curl. Um, with this one, again, set one, I'm, I'm trying to spend a little bit of time in the shortened range, um, making the 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 most of the, that part of the rep basically maybe making sure that the, the hamstrings are challenged in their shortened position um, spending a little bit more time there just to, to really rinse that and then in the second set again less emphasis on uh, on the shortened range and just sort of a normal tempo let's say one second both ends of the rep um, I think it works really well I really like that with the tempos um, to, to try and get the most out of a set if you can think if you want to try and imagine failing through a whole contractile range it does make sense to spend a little bit longer in the phases where the muscle is, is stronger or fresher basically um 
at the start of the session anyway. So then on to the life fitness leg extension. Um, so we're banned in this one. We banned both sets. The first set we banned quite heavily uh, and we do minimal load on the stack. Um, both of these sets generally within sort of 10 to 15 rep range. Um, again, a, a slight pause on the contraction at the top, sort of a two count. Uh, I'm using wraps to really lock myself down into the handles. Um, same concept in terms of the pause at the top and, and, and obviously the, the quads being fresher at the start of the session. Second set, like I say, we do band it still, but we actually add more load and have less band tension. So there's more load through the beginning and mid range. Whereas with this, there's minimal load through the beginning and mid range and there's more load at the top. Um, so yeah, that works really well with the bands. If you don't have something like prime equipment in your gym, like warehouse doesn't, then you can utilize bands to manipulate the resistance profile to, to match the strength profile how, how you want it to. So then we go on to the true squat. So uh, I've got six plates on here. I did the first time that I did it was the week prior. I uh, did five and a half plates and uh, it felt pretty good. It actually felt really heavy warming up uh, this week. But once I got into the, the sort of the business end of the warm ups, you know, even though it felt heavy, it's, it, it's kind of regardless. It's something that I say to my clients is regardless of, you know, how it feels, as long as you know, like you're safe on it. So I might not say this on a deadlift, for example, but on like a squat like this, where you're locked into the machine, if it feels heavy, just look at what your logbook says. Your logbook will tell you whether you can do it or not. Um, so yeah, went for the six plates, still managed to progress the set, uh, matched reps, 10 kilos up from last time. So real good progression. Um, that won't last that level of progression. I won't be able to chuck 10 kilos on week by week, but obviously I'm still learning the movement. It's only the second time I've done it. Um, I, to be fair, like at the minute, this is my favorite squat pattern. I'm not enjoying the hack. I'm doing the Atlantis hack in uh, in Rotherham. I don't enjoy that hack, to be honest. Um, I believe they're getting the Cybex one pretty soon, which will be good. Um, I might. I, I'm probably going to jump on the pendulum in, in Rotherham anyway. Um, but this this machine works really well with me. Um, I, I feel really well suited to it. It allows you to really challenge the quads and really drive your knees forward, initiate the rep with driving your knees forward and creating a good amount of knee flexion. Um, what I'm trying to do in terms of standardizing the set is I'm aiming to keep the reps as continuous as possible until I need to breathe. Um, with this one, I basically take one breath in each rep because I need to stay tighter. So if like on um, a leg press, you'll see in a minute on the leg press, I, I go continuous until I need that pause. With the true squat, I feel like I need that airing in that brace every rep and then as the set goes on i allow myself a maximum of three uh three breaths on this if it gets to the point where i'm spending much longer than that i could just extend the set on and on and on to try and beat my numbers which realistically it's not very accurate when it comes to to progression you know if you're just making the set longer by having sort of intra set pauses at the top so then we go on to the pivot leg press so same concept in terms of what i just said trying to keep it continuous and then i'll take the pauses when i need them so this is 13 plates aside, um, a plate up from last time. The depth is okay, it could be better, um, but I, I do generally get a, a hell of a lot of, of quad stimulus on this. My quads are blown up after the set. Um, this set was a little bit lower rep than I'd like. The jump from 12 plates to 13 plates was, was quite big and, and felt a lot heavier than last time. Again, you know, just sort of getting back into the gym getting back to sort of seeing where my strength is at post lockdown I, I seem to have gained a good amount of strength during the lockdown with the uh, the shed sessions and the, the the leg press with the flagstones um but yeah with this one i took a rep this last rep that i shouldn't have really taken i kind of knew the um the concentric wasn't going to be there uh, my, my quads were absolutely gone and the the eccentric was literally like right I'll, I'll see what i've got at the bottom but there was nothing there um then we go on to the Bulgarian split squat, dumbbell Bulgarian split squat with the heel elevation just to again create a little bit more knee flexion and try and bias the quads. So I basically just do a drop set here. So I'll take a load to failure and then I will drop to body weight and take that to failure. Um, and I've just been working that up. Obviously 40s this week as you can see. Um, I'll keep working that up. Hopefully I can have the 50s on that soon. Balance tends to be the issue really on that. Then we go on to the abductor, do a double rest pause on here and then on the final round I'll take some partials and an ISO hold as well. Then on to a seated calf press, again uh, I'll do this as a, a double rest pause and then a preacher curl as a, uh, a drop set. Then on to the, the um, 
cuffed lateral raise, do that as a rest pause, and then onto abs as a rest pause. So the, the exercise is all towards the end of rest pauses, and generally the other exercises at the start of the session were just two sets, top set back off, one set on the uh, true squat, um, top set back off on the pivot leg press with the second set paused in the hole, uh, didn't film that one. Um, and then, yeah, onto obviously the, the split squat, like I say, is a drop, like, and then onto what I've just gone through there. So, yeah, that was the session. Um, generally, really enjoying that session at the minute, to be honest. Um, upper body's a little bit niggly at the minute, so I need to work around a few things there. But lower body's going very well, uh, apart from the hack in Rotherham. Um, and then, obviously, with it being like a full day of eating, my final meal, as you can see, is on the screen now. So it's just cereal and whey, dead easy to get in. Uh, and then I'll also put my uh, totals for the end of the day on the screen as well. But I will leave the video there. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed it. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, please like, subscribe, share on your stories if you're watching. Um, like I say, much appreciated the, the people that are watching. And I will catch you in the next one.